हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादीप आई हॉस्पिटल पीजी जी टीचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट एंड फेको एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग सेंटर सांगली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया इन अवर सेंटर वी हैव लॉट ऑफ टीचिंग एक्टिविटीज विच इंक्लूड्स हैंड्स ऑन ट्रेनिंग एज वेल In this video I'll be speaking about a case where there is extremely shallow anterior chamber and small pupil and I have used a pupil expansion device here after doing capsule x-ray so this is the biometry you can see the anterior chamber depth is just 1.88 mm patient had some episodes of angle closure previously and uh, yag peripheral hysterectomy has been already done and you can see few synic as well indicating that there has been some inflammation before i made a longer incision main incision it should not be short i use hyalocot to fill the anterior chamber which is extremely shallow already and i'm using sinski to break those synecki and uh, you can see that the pupil hasn't dilated despite using a heavy uh, dispersive ovd here i already use intracameral adrenaline here but the pupil is not budging So I'm using two Sinski here to stretch it, but I feel that with such a shallow AC, I think it's better to use a uh, Kuglen hooks to stretch the pupil. So uh, and you can see uh, by the time I'm doing this, uh, the iris starts prolapsing. So uh, it's not a very rigid pupil, and the uh, iris has a tendency to prolapse. Now here I would say that I should have used a pupil expansion device or iris retractors. Uh, but i went ahead with uh, doing capsule excess and i realized that uh, probably it's not a good idea because uh, it's not a rigid pupil so sometimes if you have a rigid pupil and uh, you can get away you can do capsule excess under the iris easily but here you can see the pupil has becoming now smaller and the iris is trying to prolapse from the main incision so i again inflated the anterior chamber with hyalocot and then i uh, completed the rexis but of course at this point i decided that i must use a pupil expansion device so push some ovd under the iris so i can place this is a b hex ring which has been uh, created by dr suven batacharji and while putting this ring after cc you have to make sure that the cc is not engaged by the device so that is how under visualization i put it and the uh, ccc is large then you can lift the pupil device little bit up after engaging the iris so you know that there is a space between the ccc margin and the the device so i generally use only one side port so this is how i tuck the third flange under the iris and i prefer to do this because then the uh, flange of this uh, b hex under the incision is below the iris so when i use the iol or insert the iol it doesn't drag the b hex ring with it so you can see the ccc is complete but it's small so obviously i don't want to go ahead with a small ccc i want it at least 5 mm so i made a tangential tear there using a micro scissor and then using micro forceps i am enlarging the capsule rexis so it's very important in these cases that uh, you have a 5 mm capsule rexis and that was the primary reason why i decided to go ahead with the pupil expansion device because i knew that the ccc was small controlled hydro dissection is the key if i inject lot of fluid the iris can still prolapse despite using pupil expansion device here now it's a very soft uh, uh, kind of a mushy kind of cat track where it's very difficult to chop uh, so probably here i would have avoided doing chop which i could manage little bit but you can see the separation is not complete so in these uh, you know softer cat tracks i think if we get a nice deep trench and separate the nucleus into two hemi nuclei at the beginning it makes things easier but here as i decided to do chops and uh, i was not getting a good hold because it's a soft grade cat track uh, i kind of divided the nucleus but then it was not complete so 
I decided to go back to the most reliable technique of trench divide. So I made a deep trench there and then uh, I divided the nucleus further. So for any such case, it's very important you have a deep trench and you can see that I, I could now separate the pieces and you have to try to take out the first piece which is free from both sides. So that's what I am doing now. So initially I tried to pull out a piece which was attached on one side. So I am making sure that the piece I want to you know remove from the bag is something which is uh, free from both sides. And once you have that, then you can use the uh, you know flow high flow rate and uh, vacuum to pull out the free piece from the bag like here this piece was free and I could easily pull it out from the bag and once one piece is out in the soft cat track you can then take out all other pieces uh, reasonably easily so probably here I would have started right from a deep trench and divide so I get a nice two heminuclei which are completely separated and once that is done it's easier to pull out these pieces from the bag so I am using here Centurion Peco machine which has active fluidics so I use 46 millimeters of uh, IOP and uh, at the last piece the bottle got over so it gives an indication that bottle is over so I took this time to just replenish the OVD make the chamber deep again and then go ahead and at this point I found that the iris was kind of coming out from the left side port incision so I decided not to use that incision if possible so during cortex aspiration as well I just uh, did single handed coaxial IA I didn't use the side port incision to stabilize the globe which I generally do in my cases so this was to avoid any further damage to this kind of prolapsed iris through the side port you can see that the iris is stuck in that uh, side port there and very carefully I am removing the cortex here you have to be watchful of the anterior capsorexis margin because uh, the AC is, was very very shallow to begin with uh, these cases may have zonular weakness or uh, elasticity as well so you don't want to pull the bag so you have to be a little bit careful watching the movement of the capsulexis margin there whenever I am you know, trying to aspirate the cortex you should not be pulling on that anterior capsular margin there I think once the IA is finished I am going to insert the IL again here while doing IL insertion you have to be mindful of that uh, flange there and as I said I generally try to keep that flange under the incision under the iris so it doesn't dra get dragged when you are pushing the trailing haptic in the bag sometimes it gets dragged and then uh, you have to retrieve it very carefully otherwise it may cause PC tear and once the IL insertion is done I am removing this B hex ring which is very very easy it's a uniplanar ring uh, very soft on the iris you can use it on under topical anesthesia no problem patient doesn't have any discomfort while using this so and a uh, good thing is that it's very gentle on the pupil so usually you don't get those dilated fixed pupil after using this device visco wash or OVD wash is very very important in this case and particularly you have to wash out all the OVD from the bag so that you don't get post operative inflammation as well as capsular distension so that is most important so you have to give enough time for entire OVD wash there that's what I am doing here and now the case is complete intracameral moxifloxacin and you can see the iris is trying to come out of the main incision there because ACD of 1.88 is extremely shallow anterior chamber there is very little margin for error also you have very little space in the anterior chamber to work on you have to be very careful about the endothelium as well and just watch how we did the hydration when I did the hydration initially I saw to it that there is not much of fluid going in the anterior chamber initially so few things I learned from this case Kuglen hooks probably are better to do stretch papilloplasty as you can see those Sinskis were not engaging the iris well I think it is better to use pupil expansion device early in such cases because uh, here if the rexis would have gone you know outside or it had extended I would have been in trouble 
and when you are using pupil expansion device after you have already done the ccc you have to be always watchful of the ccc margin make sure that you retract uh, uh, iris and see that the pupil expansion device and margin are diff separate I always enlarge the ccc to 5 mm do not continue with small capsule x in these cases where the ac is shallow control hydro dissection is the key because even if you have used the pupil expansion device if you use excessive hydro dissection and the fluid accumulates it can push the iris out of the incision it is also important that uh, nucleus division should be complete at the beginning itself because uh, if you don't have complete nucleus division as you can see that i took longer time for doing the quadrant removal single ended ia as to avoid the iris damage when i saw that the iris was incarcerated in the side port always be mindful of trailing haptic of the iol dragging the b hex along with it so that is very important so all these points are really important when you do the case and the complete visco wash so each and every step where you feel that you should uh, you know improvise you should change your tactics that has to be always listened to and do the changes thanks for watching and do subscribe to my channel thank you so much